Miss Me Singing. to our 10 o'clock worship service and we're glad to have you especially if you're visiting with us we're glad to have you with us to praise and worship our Lord and Savior today <clears throat> if you have a bulletin we'll look at the uh, announcements that we have and there may be others you all want to mention uh, there'll be a deacons meeting this afternoon at 4 30 here at the church uh, Bible study tonight at 6 be a uh, kingdom heroes uh, brother Kevin will be sharing video with uh, brother Tony Evans and he'll be sharing for his heart too uh, no service this Wednesday, November the 24th. There'll be no prayer service and no wash this Wednesday. All right. Mark Lanier is going to be here Saturday, November the 27th at 6 p.m. here at the church. A singer and a minister will be here. There's uh, posters, I believe, up here that you can distribute if you want to in the community. There's available up there. And then our last is Wow You Did It. And uh, Everybody give money or brought in shoot boxes to be filled, and uh, there was 329 boxes that were done. And so y'all, uh, you, you did did good. All right, all right, did good. So a lot of kids around the world were blessed because of the giving from this church. And I know there's a lot of work went into it. The women did a lot of work, and everyone that brought, I know you did. But those little kids' hearts are going to be blessed when they get to open up those boxes. Any other announcements? Ms. Ellen.
Hey, Brother Jim, I'd like to thank everybody for what the church did for us during uh, Pastor Appreciation Month and also for our wedding anniversary and our birthday. So thank you, thank you. Any other announcements? <clears throat> Okay, Fern Estes, we need to remember William Earl and that family. Okay. What was that name again? Broom? Mac Broom. Okay. You want to share, Evan, about the, 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 little, the, the little the child that you said this morning? Uh, Bob Panaman uh, has tested positive for COVID, uh, so we need to remember pa Bob. And a, another person that's mentioned in the first service is Oma Talbert. Let's mention need prayer to this morning. That's right. And Brock was Brock Wheeler. We need to remember Brock. Brock's a uh, He's, uh, he had tumors and, uh, on his brain, and it's moved. He's got lesions on his uh, spinal cord, and he started taking uh, radiation and uh, chemo treatments this week. Anyone else? Okay, David's having knee replacement. Right. Okay. He's in Conway. Okay, Jay Thumberg. <clears throat> okay, anyone else? David, you lead some prayer again. Amen. Count your blessings. <clears throat>
Special music. Is there anybody out there who would like to sing? Raise your hand if you'd like to sing. <laughs> Maybe that's why you can't sing then, because you you know you thought I was gonna call you up, didn't you? Somebody in our first service said, Brother Kevin, I can't get up and sing a special, but one day when I get to heaven, I'm gonna sing like a bird. Amen. Well, maybe you've got something you'd like to share, a testimony time this morning, a praise you want to give the Lord because he is worthy of our praise. Miss Sue, go ahead. That's truly a blessing, amen. Woo. We're proud for you, Miss Sue. You've been in that trailer a long time. But you like you say, the, I guess you got the you talking about that song moving on up. That was from the Jefferson, wasn't it? I'm moving on up. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're, real, we're real proud for you. Somebody else want to share something this morning? Woo, praise God. Amen. Yes. So 
somebody else want to share? All right, go ahead. That's a blessing. Maybe there's something you'd like to just stand and thank God for. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up. Maybe you have something you're real thankful for. We've got so much. Brother Keith. Thank you, Brother Keith. I tell you, that was funny. <laughs> but thank the Lord, amen, that you're here. Somebody else, yes. Yes.
Anyone else? Well, let's go ahead and dismiss for Children's Church at this time. Children's Church. Sound like a stampede coming through. Hey. <laughs> hey. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. If you have your Bibles, be turning to Psalm 86. Psalm 86, three verses we're going to be looking at. Verse 11, verse 12, and verse 13. Psalm 86. I'll give you a few moments to find that. You know, here we are the Sunday before Thanksgiving and we're going to close out our series entitled Thankfulness. This is, I believe, our third message. You know, I was thinking the other day, our year is filled with a lot of special days. Matter of fact, I did some research and I found out that there are an average of two to three special days attached to every day on our calendar. Every day on your calendar has an average of two to three special days attached to it. And here's what I'm talking about. January the 11th is National Learn Your Name in Mars Go Day. January the 21st is National Squirrel Appreciation Day. Now, you may think I'm joking, but that's kind of what it has come to. I mean, every day we've made special days attached to it. Just take, for instance, today. Today is November the 21st, 2021. And today is National Hello Day. It is World Television Day. It's also Red Mitten Day. And I don't have any mittens, but it's National Red Mitten Day. And it's also National Stuffing Day. Now, we country folks don't call it stuffing. We call it dressing. But anyway, it's National Stuffing Day. That's what's special about today. See, there were four things attached to this day. As a special day. Now, don't get me wrong, I love special days, especially holidays. But it's easy sometimes with all this stuff going on, it's so easy for us to lose the meaning of some days that are very special, some holidays that go on every year. Let's be honest. You know, it's easy for us to lose the meaning of Christmas in the clamoring sound of presents being torn open or what's his name, Santa Claus. It's easy for us to lose the idea of Easter to some guy named Peter Cottondale and a basket full of eggs and candy. It's real easy to lose the meaning of Christmas and Easter because of our secular world. How easy is it for us to lose the very meaning and idea of thanksgiving 
to the turkey and to the shopping and to the beginning of the Christmas season. But you see, Thanksgiving is more than a holiday. Thanksgiving is more than a holiday. Being thankful shouldn't be limited to one day a year. It should be a way of life, especially for us Christians, amen. A time of expressing gratitude and appreciation for others and to God should be something you and I do every day of our life. I know it's easy to lose the meaning when so many other things are going on and they crowd our days. But Thanksgiving is more than turkey. It's more than cranberry sauce. It's more than pumpkin pie. It's more than shopping, getting 50% off. It's more than Black Friday deals the day after. And yes, it's even more than friends and relatives and seeing people you probably haven't seen in a year or so. It's more than that. It's a day dedicated to show our thankfulness and appreciation to the God in which we serve. Here in Psalms, our text today, David is expressing his appreciation to God. And you know what? It wasn't even Thanksgiving. Well, I guess it could have been. Who knows what day he wrote it on. But it wasn't even, I think it probably wasn't Thanksgiving when he wrote this. But he's showing his appreciation to God. So if you have that this morning, Psalm 86, say I have it, Pastor. Would you stand with me in the reverence to the reading of God's word. We'll begin in verse 11 and we'll read 11, 12, and 13. Psalm 86, verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Verse 12. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart and I will glorify your name forevermore. Verse 13, for great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. May it penetrate deep in our hearts. May it change us today that we would become even more thankful for what you've given us. Lord, we pray you bless this time now. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen, you may be seated. David shows us what it means to be thankful. He shows us what it means to be grateful to God for what, he, what he's done and who he is. And in our text today, he shows us that Thanksgiving is more than just a holiday. First of all, he shows us that Thanksgiving is a way of life. This time of year, you know, people go all out on sports. Sports like football and sports like basketball. They even become the reason some people live. I mean, there's some people that are really, I mean, they really they gotta have their sports. I've seen shirts that say, life's a game, but football is serious. Another shirt I saw had a picture of a basketball and it says, it's my life, any questions? Now, there's nothing wrong with you getting excited about sports, nothing wrong with you having a hoorah for your favorite team. I sure was hoping Arkansas could pull that off against Alabama yesterday. And at one time I thought they were mighty close and there's nothing wrong with getting excited about your favorite team. But the truth is, let me tell you something. It's not going to last forever. It's not going to last forever. As a matter of fact, as weeks go by, as days go by, we'll forget all about what happened this weekend. We'll forget all about it. And if you're involved in sports, guess what? One day your knees are going to give out. <laughs> One day, amen, your hair is going to turn gray, Amen. One day, you're not going to be able to run, amen, like you do now. Time, even though it's a great healer, time causes things to happen. And sports are not going to last forever. But we see here from the life of David something quite different. Something that was different about David's attitude in his life. If he had a t-shirt, it would probably say, Jehovah is life 
And the rest really doesn't matter. And the truth is, my friend, Jehovah is life and nothing else does matter. Amen? David says in verse 11, look at it. Teach me your way, O Lord. Teach me your way. In other words, David wants to know what God has to say about life. David wants to know what God has to say about living. He doesn't want to know his own way. He doesn't want to do his own thing. He wants to know God's way and what God has for him to do. And then he goes on to say, I will walk in your truth. You know David's not concerned here what the world calls truth. David's not concerned here what some people label as truth. He's concerned about God and his truth. Folks, I want you to know we live in a society today where truth has been twisted. Just as Satan twisted the truth in the very beginning in the garden, we're living in a time when the truth has been twisted. Amen. And it's hard for people to see the truth. But David here, David here, he is concerned about God and his truth. If you really want to know truth, you look to God's word. Here's where you'll find truth, my friend, amen. Here's where you'll find truth. And his desire, David's desire is truly and clearly, his desire is to follow God. He goes on to pray, unite my heart to fear your name. You know what a powerful prayer David is praying here? He prays that God's heart and his heart would become one, that his heart would become as God's heart, that he wouldn't be divided in his allegiance to his devotion to God, that his heart would be one that would come to fear God and respect God and honor God. That was David's prayer. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way which seems right to a man but the end is the way of death. I'll read it again. There is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. David prayed here for God's way, not man's way. Now, in that verse in Proverbs that I just read to you, it actually shows us three things. It shows us that there's a way. It shows us that that way seems right, But it also shows us that that way that seems right ends in death. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, in Proverbs, there is a way. Jesus says he is the way. In Proverbs, it says that that way seems right and true, but Jesus says he is truth. And in Proverbs, it says that that way ends in death, but Jesus says he is life. Listen, my friend, this attitude of thankfulness and appreciation is more than just a thing we do at the end of November. It should be a way of life for us because Jesus is alive inside of us and because Jesus is alive inside of us, we live a life of thankfulness because we know we should be thankful thankful for what he's done for us. Amen. Secondly, not only is it a way of life, but thanksgiving is an act of worship. Listen to what David said in the next verse, verse 12. I will praise you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Now some translations say I will give thanks Instead of I will praise you. So here, I see that David is tying his thankfulness with glorifying and worshiping the name of God. He's tying these two together. And that's a big thing, folks. That's a big thing because he's showing us that part of worship is being thankful for who God is and what he has done. You cannot separate being thankful and worshiping God. They are tied together. Do you hear that? Part of worship is saying, thank you, God. It's showing God that you understand and that you realize that you're not worthy of what he's given you or what he's done for you. And because you realize that, it makes you so thankful. You're so grateful. 
and you don't take his love for granted. Not one second. Folks, I know where my bread's buttered, amen? I know where my bread's buttered. God's given me a wonderful wife, a wonderful family, and I love my wife, and yeah, my, she butters my bread, amen? But I'm gonna tell you, when it all comes down to where the rubber meets the road, it's because of the goodness of God that all that's happened, amen? David also talks about his desire to glorify God, that, that verse. He said, it's my desire to glorify you forever. Now that word glorify, it's a really powerful idea. If you do a word search, glorify means heavy or weighty. That's what it means, heavy or weighted. In other words, David is giving us the idea here of honoring or boasting and praising the name of God. Here's the picture that we get from verse 12. God, your name is so great. You are so wonderful that you are so much more worthy of anything that I can actually give you. So I add weight to you. I reverence you. I honor you, Lord, with everything I have. That was David's desire. And I want you to know something, my friend. It was David's desire, and it should be our desire today as children of God, amen, to want to worship him with thanksgiving every day of our life, amen. Let's be honest, you know it may take some effort, but really it's easy to get up and come to church on Sunday. And it may take some preparation, but it's easy to teach a class or it's easy to sing songs. It's easy to sit and hear a message. I mean, when it gets down right to it, it's easy for us to go through the motions of church. It may take some effort. It may take some preparation. But I mean, really, folks, we didn't really didn't have to sacrifice to come to church. Hey, man. But David is talking about something here in Scripture that you and I can't fake. This attitude of appreciation, this attitude of being thankful in every situation is real, my friend, and it hits in the middle of our everyday life. It's something we has, that has to permeate throughout our very being. Well, why, do, why, do, why does it have to be that way, Brother Kevin? Because being thankful is not an option for the children of God. Being thankful is not an option because being thankful is a part of our worship. That's how we worship God, is being thankful. And it's not a question whether to be thankful or not. The question is, yes, you will be thankful because if you worship God, part of that must be being thankful. Well, Brother Gavin, you just don't understand. It's been a rough year for me. Brother Gavin, you ain't looked at my bank account. Brother Gavin, you don't know about my relationship problems. Brother Gavin, you don't understand the sickness my family's had. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. And the old devil will try to cause things to come in our lives that try to beat us down and try to turn our backs on worshiping God. But being thankful, even in the rough times, shows the world, really, your heart. And part of worship is being Thankful. And then lastly, the third thing. Thanksgiving is a change of art. It's a change of art. You know, you may have told your daughter or your son that they couldn't go to the movies this past Friday. 
But you got to thinking about it. You got to thinking about it and you said, oh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you go to the movies. Or maybe you started dating somebody and after you dated them a few times, you may have first thought that they were the one for you. But after a few dates, you decided, nope, <laughs> they're not the one for me. Or maybe you thought you had life all figured out. And then you learned, I was wrong about a few things. Or maybe you thought that you would wear bell bottoms and, and elevator shoes. I guess they're called platforms. And that you would dance to disco the rest of your life. But you may have had a change of heart. We were talking about this in the first service this morning. Those bell bottoms, they came back into style. Those platforms, the elevator shoes, we called them, they came back in style. Now the disco, no, it hadn't come back in style. And the village people, no, they never did come back in style. But you know all these things I mentioned, actually these things I talked about, that was not a change of heart. That's a change of mind. You see, when your heart is changed, it's much bigger than a movie on Friday night. Or it's much bigger than a relationship. It's much bigger uh, than dancing to the disco beat. It's much bigger than that. A change of heart is much bigger. When your heart is changed, my friend, it will revolutionize your life because it changes you not from the outside in. So many people want that today. Oh, they can change a few days from the outside in. They can change the way they act. They can change the way they talk. They can change some things about them from the outside in. But my friend, when you have a change of heart, it changes you from the inside out, amen. And things that are changed you from the inside out, it changes Changes you forever. What does America need? I want to tell you what they need. They need to change your heart. They need to change your heart. The Bible describes it in Ephesians when it says, Behold, all things are passed away. All things have become new. Let me tell you, when you give your life to Jesus, he changes you from the inside out. Amen. There's a heart change. And when your heart is changed, my friend, everything about you is changed and being thankful to God and being grateful to God for what he's done requires us to have a heart change. David talks about it in verse 13. Look at it. He says, For great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. David is talking about a life changing experience that he's encountered with God. David had a life changing experience. He had a heart change. Notice that verse didn't start with something he had done good. It started with God's mercy. It started with God's mercy. It was only through the mercy of God that David knew that he was saved and that he, he led a life of separation to God. My friend, I want you to know something this morning. It's the same way it works with us. It's because of the mercy of God that you could stand this morning and praise him and thank him for the things you did. It's because of the mercy of God that we have a home in heaven. It's because of the mercy of God that our sins have been forgiven. It's because of the mercy of God that we have the blessings that we have today. It's because of God's mercy, not because we've done anything. And being thankful creates a heart change in us. David realized something. He realized the love that God had for him. And he realized just how merciful God was. And because when he realized that, you know what happened? It changed his life. And you know something else? When I realized how merciful God was to me, a sinner, 
it changed my life too. And do you know something? I can go all around this room and you can go back from the time that you were saved and it's because you realized the mercy that God had for you. You realized the love that God showed for you. That's what changed your life, amen. That's what changed your life. It changed your life also, amen. The word mercy here, or loving kindness in some translations, is referring to God's covenant with man. We can go back and do a word search. It's talking about referring to the covenant that God has with man. The new covenant, the new testament, the new covenant. And that covenant came to fruition when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, was sacrificed so that you and I might be forgiven. Jesus was God's mercy in the flesh. And we owe our gratitude. We owe our thanksgiving to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords for what he's done for us on Calvary. Amen. And just as the act of love, God's mercy changed David's heart, it can change your heart today, my friend. It can change your heart today. You can have eternal life through Jesus Christ today. I left some room on your bulletins. Five spaces. Five things I wanted you to write down that you're thankful for. Five things that you're thankful for. I know that's just a small place for you to write so many things down, but just pick five things that you're thankful for. And then, in your prayer time, be sure to mention these five things. Things that you're so thankful for. Folks, I'm going to as I look out here today and see your faces. I know God has blessed you, even though it's been a rough year for some of you. For some of you, it's been a rough year. You've lost loved ones. You've had health issues. A lot of things have been going on in your life. But folks, I want you to know, God is still in control. And none of this has taken him by surprise. His hand is there, pulling you through it, leading you through it. And folks, we've got so much to be thankful for. Amen? You see, being thankful is more than just a holiday. It's more than turkey and dressing and potato pie or pumpkin pie and all the good stuff that we have. Thanksgiving is more than that. It's more than NFL football and it's more than visits with family members. It's actually a life we live. Not just one day a year either. It's a life we live as children of God 365 days out of a year. It's more than a holiday. It's a way of life. It's an act of worship. And it's a change of heart. Amen. I want to sing you a song. Can I sing you a song? I'm going to sing you a song. For making the sun to shine Putting the stars in the sky For the flowers that bloom The ocean so blue A sweet melody for the rivers that flow, the rain and the snow. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for my whole family, for the joy my children bring, for shoes on my feet, plenty to eat. Thank you, Lord, for the church and pray for the freedoms I have today for your spirit I feel presence so real thank you Lord I 
just want to thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Stand with me this morning. For being a friend so dear, giving my sad heart cheer, for holding my hand when I could not stand. For taking my place, mercy and grace, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you. For making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. For making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for watching today. God bless you.